worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lights around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mended every heart. I worship you. I worship you, oh, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. stop work and never stop and never stop work even when I don't see you working even when I feel you working and never stop and never stop working and never stop and never stop working oh, even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop oh even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop oh way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Hey guys, it's Jordan here, and look, I, obviously as you're watching, this is the first time that you've been on this online experience together, as we've been wanting to change the way that we've been doing our services and our community online, uh, all together as a family, and so what a cool way that you're jumping in as you're watching this, and probably you're gonna see a lot of different things change from how we're adding uh, worship and a message and a couple different elements to this, um, and it's a lot of exciting news, but why we wanted to unveil it this way is also, there's actually one really big, important thing that uh, we know that you guys have been a part of and so a lot of you guys have been weighing in on the whole name change thing you know for the longest time ignite has been the name of the youth ministry since the beginning of uh, IES you know and now that we've gone through this transformation as a community to the collective a lot of you guys have weighed in on the conversation of maybe some options that we could choose to change the name of the youth ministry into something else or something new and so as we wanted to revamp just what this culture and what this youth community looks like, we want to announce what the name of the new youth ministry is going to be. Are you ready? Drum roll. Maybe sound effects, fireworks, I don't know. Drum roll on your, drum roll on your computer. Drum roll on your dog. Go to your mom and drum roll on her face. No, I'm just kidding, don't do that. But drum roll, drum roll. The name of the youth ministry is TCU. <laughs> I, I, they might add the sounds, I don't know. But look, TC Youth is the name of the youth ministry and we've prayed about this. We also asked you guys and a lot of you guys were voting and saying, hey, I can get behind this name TC Youth. And because you guys are the people that matter the most to us, we wanna go with this and get behind this. 
And so TC Youth is the name of the youth ministry that we want to launch with. And we have big dreams for this, man. And not only that, we hope that you have big dreams for this because we want this to be our ministry. This isn't Pastor Jordan's ministry. This isn't just the collective's ministry. This is our ministry as a team and as a family because we get to build this thing together. So as we journey together, I would love to hear your guys' dreams and your guys' vision for how we can make TC Youth a great and incredible place. But before we jump into that, I also want to share with you my heart and also the heart that I feel like God's put on our team for this uh, season and for ourselves as a youth community. So the vision that we have for TC Youth is this, that we want to build a generation to be confident in God. It sounds really simple. It sounds really straight to the point. But I want you to picture this. Imagine you where you are right now. Do you, do you actually feel confident in God? Do you feel confident about yourself? Do you feel confident about your future? Do you feel confident about what you've gone through in the past and how you feel about yourself today? You know, and so for us, we think about how so many people try to toss about how, oh, they wanna raise teens to do this or be this. But you know, what I, you know what I really think for you guys that matters the most is I think how important is it for you to walk away knowing that you're, you can be confident in God, that you can be confident in God in your future so you can have hope for your future. You'll be confident in God in your present so you could trust God today. And not only that, how many of you guys know sometimes we make mistakes? Maybe you guys, as your teenagers, you're figuring life out, you're figuring things out. And as you're figuring things out, you, sometimes you're gonna make mistakes. And I grew up in this, I grew up in a church culture where if you made a mistake, you were shamed for it. People looked down on you for it. But we believe that we wanna raise a generation that knows, man, if I make a mistake, I can be confident that God's gonna have my back. I'm gonna run towards Him, not away from Him. And that's what we wanna build. So that's why that's gonna be our vision that we wanna carry as a community, that we wanna build you to be confident in God. So with that said, let's get ready and let's enjoy the service together. Hey guys, hey guys. I'm Kyra. And I'm Fear. Welcome to TCU, especially if you're new. Yes, we are so glad to have you here with us today. But before we get into the sermon, we have a couple of announcements first. So what's the first one, Five? So the first announcement we have is Team Bible Thursdays happening every week at 5 p.m. It's where we dig deeper into God's Word and discover more about Him. So we're currently done with the first with First Corinthians and we're about to dive into Second Corinthians. But before that, we are going to be having a game night to celebrate the end of a book next Thursday at 5 p.m. So what's next, Fear? Well, since we've changed to TCU, we're not calling our Friday Hangouts Late Night Ignite anymore. Instead, we're having Friday Fuel. So every Friday at 8 p.m., we always have something fun to do together, like play games or hang out together. Remember to check out our Instagram account, The Collective Youth, for more info. What else, Pyro? And we have a special announcement. We are going to be having a youth open forum. So TC Youth is partnering with IS Teams. This forum is where we have speakers answering life's toughest questions. It's going to be on July 29th until the 30th at 4 until 6 p.m. Don't forget to register at the link below. It's totally free. We'll see you there. Also, another thing you guys need to know is that we are recruiting teens to help fill in these services. We're looking for teens who are available to go to church and be an MC, just like what Pierre and I are doing right now. So if you're up for this, please contact Lydia or your tribe leader to get you plugged in. Do you have anything else, Pierre? Yes, lastly, if you're new here, we have these TCU services every Sunday every week on Sunday, 11.30 a.m. and we use the same Zoom link each week. Also, if you're free, come hang out with us after the service because we're going to be playing games. That's it for announcements. Let's head to the sermon. Hey guys, it's Pastor Jordan here and welcome to TC Youth. Look, as you guys knew from the last, uh, the last announcement that we just had, uh, you guys heard the big news of how not only have we changed the name of the youth ministry, but we're also kicking off a new format for our online service together. So with that said, we're also going to start this whole thing off with a new series. And the name of the series is called Free People. Free People. Did you guys know that God has designed us to be free? In fact, that's God's heart. God's heart is for us to be free people. Now, my question to you today is what comes to your mind when you think of the word freedom? Do you think of 
someone that comes out of jail and now they're free? Do you think of someone that had college debt or high school debt or, or they had debt to somebody and now they're free? Do you think of freedom as, you know, you are finally away from your parents or maybe you not, you can, you have a driver's license and you can do whatever you want to do, right? What, what, like, I want to give a quick five second little window for you guys to think of that question. What comes to your mind when you think of the word freedom? One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, whatever picture or image or phrase that popped up into your head, if you wanted, you could put it in the chat below or in the Zoom room. But for us, see, our, our picture of freedom looks like our, our way of not being controlled, our, our perception of not having control or not being around people that are controlling of us. And so when we think about that concept of freedom, that is actually God's heart. And that's what I think a lot of us want. And maybe for some of you in high school or middle school, you, you, you feel like you're more free than you've ever been before because maybe you feel like you, you don't have to sleep at a certain time. You have more space and room to play video games. You have more opportunity to, to go, uh, go to certain places that you couldn't before from your parents. Like your parents are giving you more freedom. But then somehow it doesn't feel like the full freedom that we want yet because we think there's another next level or layer of freedom awaiting us. When we go into college, when we can get away from family, when we can pay our own bills, when we can get our own job, right? There's always this next level of freedom that we think we're looking for because we're looking for a life that we can have our own control. Now, see, the funny thing about freedom is that actually when we think about the Christian church, some of us have some of us have a perception of the Christian church as, or, or maybe not just the Christian church, maybe also God as the antithesis to freedom. Or another word for antithesis is uh, the anti-freedom machine, right? Like, like when we think of church and, and God, we think it could be the opposite of freedom because we'll think, man, well, well, church and Christianity and God, it's all about rules. You know, you shouldn't steal. You shouldn't have sex. You shouldn't lie. You shouldn't drink alcohol. You shouldn't party. You need to read the Bible. You need to go to church. You need to sit in a small group and open up about your life. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll see uh, Christianity and church and God not as a relationship and as a way to connect and grow with people, but as a way of it constricting our freedom, as a way of it boiling us down and controlling us and breaking us apart. And, and, and we can view uh, God in life that way. And how many of you guys know if we view God in life that way, then we're going to walk out that kind of life uh, for the rest of our life. Like it's going to show through our actions, going to show through how we feel around people. And how many of you guys know that, that that's not, that doesn't sound like a free life. Living by a bunch of rules doesn't sound like the free life that God, God, that we say God has for us. And so as we unpack this word called freedom, my hope is, is by the end of the series, we will get a clear revelation of that, of the fact that God not only wants us to be free, but what that looks like on an everyday practical basis. What does freedom cover? What kind of topics does freedom go over? What, what does freedom look like in my everyday life? All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up your Bible to Galatians chapter five and go to verse one. And today we're going to be reading in, um, we're going to reading from the version of NIV, the New International Version, because there's, there's a certain phrase in here that I really like the way they put it, okay? Uh, but before we go into uh, Galatians, what I want to do is I just want to kind of give a little bit of background for what's, what Galatians was about or the church in Galatia. See, Galatians was a letter that was written to the people in a, an area called Galatia. And it was written by this guy named Paul. A lot of you guys have heard the name Paul, the Apostle Paul, famous, famous Bible guy. But the, the church in Galatia at the time, they were a mix of two people. They were a mix of Gentiles and Jews. Gentiles and Jews. Now, a little history lesson. Gentiles were, uh, Gentiles were essentially, they were non-Jews. And, and Jews were the people that were following the Ten Commandments, the rules. These are all the rules God gave us. This is what God said to us. And so when you have people that were non-Jewish people and Jewish people all come in the same room, you're obviously going to have two different belief systems, two different rule systems, two different ethic systems and culture systems clashing with each other. You have these Gentiles that had no clue about the Ten Commandments. You have Gentiles that had no clue about circumcision. You have Gentiles that had no clue about 
different rules of the Jewish law. And yet these Jewish people that are now just coming to know Jesus are coming in this place saying, well, hey, you need to follow our rules. You need to follow what we're saying. So there's this big clash of, of, of following rules and not following rules and, and this whole uh, fight and controversy going on of, well, I thought God wanted me to be free, but now you're pushing all these rules on me and it doesn't feel like freedom. So we're going to pick up here at Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It's, n- it's not for us to owe God a favor. It is not for us to blindly follow God. And, and it's not for us to just become good Christians that Christ set us free. No, it is for freedom that Christ wanted to set us free. Jesus, the heart of God and the heart behind Jesus is for our freedom. Okay, so then it says, stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery, or in other words, a yoke of the law, following the Ten Commandments. Are you not being a good Christian? Are you being bad? What's wrong with you? You need to follow, 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 do the good rules. The yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. See, what's happening here is the Jewish people are talking to the Gentile people saying, hey, our tradition says that you need to be circumcised in order to finally be accepted by God, in order to finally find belonging with Jesus in community. And these Gentile guys are like, Paul has been telling us we just need Jesus. We don't need all these rules. And, and so and imagine the rule that they want him to follow is this thing called circumcision. Now, I'm not going to go into detail of what that is in case you don't know. You could ask your parents. Uh, But circumcision is a really intense thing, especially if you're a guy. So it goes forward and it says, Again, I declare to you, every man who lets himself be circumcised, that every man that lets himself be circumcised, that he is obligated to obey the law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ, You have fallen away from grace. If you're here and you keep trying to justify yourself to God by how good of a Christian you've been, how good of a person you've been, how many good rules that you've been following, you're not justified before God by grace. You're justified before God by something called the law, something called your own rules and self-righteousness. But see, Jesus freed us from that by this thing called grace. I'm going to get to that in a second. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope for. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is a big thing. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. The only thing that matters to Jesus is faith expressing itself through love towards God and love towards people. That's the only thing that counts. It's not, have you been reading your Bible? Have you been smoking? Have you been drinking alcohol? Have you been doing this? Have you been, re- have you been a good Christian? That's, that's what's counted towards what, what's good enough for God's eyes. I, I think the Bible is pretty clear right here that it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. This is Jesus talking to both Jewish people and Gentile people. And guess what? If we are Christian, we are Gentile people. This applies to us. Then it goes on and it says to verse 7, You are running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? What kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you? A little least works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion. Whoever that may be will have to pay the penalty. So, I'm going to come to that part in a little bit. But see, Paul here, he's trying to address something. He's trying to talk about how this this Jewish people, again, they're trying to put all these rules and regulations. And if anything, they're trying to make these steps on how we need to think we have to, we have to follow these steps in order to get to God. He's trying to, people are trying to add all these steps and these doors of what it means to be close to God, what it means for God to be right here next to us. We need to summon God through all these good things that we're doing. And if you do anything bad, God is going to be far away from you. And Paul is trying to sit here and say, that is weird. Who taught you that? Who's telling you that? That is not God's heart. And if anything, that does not sound like freedom. 
See, God's heart, if God's heart is freedom, I think that means that Jesus wanted to eliminate every step that, that we think we have to put in front of each other or climb because freedom means that we have direct access to God. We have direct, we have direct authority to say, God, I need you right now. And God is there. See, that is freedom. See, a lot of us in our faith journey, we think walking or being near to God equals following the rules and not walking close to God equals not following the rules. But see, you know what Jesus did at the cross is Jesus fulfilled every rule and every obligation and every law abiding principle because he wanted to be the perfect example, not for us, but what, what, what Jesus did when he did that is that Jesus fulfilled the requirement for us to be perfect by being perfect. And then when Jesus died, that means that, man, we don't need to strive to be perfect because Jesus was perfect for us. So now, you know what that means? That we can have freedom. That's what grace means. That's what, that's what Jesus wants to give to us. Jesus wants us to walk as free people, not living in this concept of trying to justify ourselves and make us right before God. But Jesus came and he said, man, I'm gonna be right for you before God. And when I die and, and my sins and my blood's covering your sins for past, present and future, now you are always right before God. See, God's heart is that we are free people. In fact, I wanna say it this way. Jesus' heart is for us to be free people. Remember what it says in Galatians chapter five. It says, man, for us, it's for our freedom that Christ has set us free. It's for our freedom that Christ has set us free. How good is that, guys? From our freedom, for, for what? It's not for our good works. It's not for, for our, our church attendance to go up. It's not, for, it's not for our Bible readings to start happening or our good Christianity to happen. It's not for that. It is for our freedom that Christ has set us free. So, what do we do? What do we do with all this? The first thing that we could do is we can relax. We can, we can take a breath. See, I know so many Christians that they feel like they've become more anxious being a Christian than they were before Christian because they felt like, man, is God always watching over my shoulder, waiting for me to mess up so he can throw me out? Is God always watching over my shoulder, making sure I'm perfect and I'm good enough so that he won't leave me behind? I know so many Christians that have struggled with that and they use that towards other people. But see, the first thing that we could do is just first take a breath and relax. Because man, Jesus came to break us free from any of that obligation or law or rules so we can have direct access with him all the time. And see, why we can relax is, is so that we can rest in what God has done. And not only that, as we go through the rest of this series, we're going to talk more about what, from that place of being relaxed and rested in what God has done, what that looks like then through the rest of our life. What's that going to look like through everything that we do towards each other and towards our relationship with God. But remember, the first thing I want us to do just today is relax. Because Jesus' heart is that we would be free and that we would be free as people. So let's pray. God, we thank you so much just for who you are, what you've done, and who you've been in our lives. God, I pray that right now you would just continue to speak to each teen here. That if there's anyone here that doesn't feel a sense of freedom, doesn't feel a sense of joy, they don't feel like they could be open about their faith because they feel like they've already been not good enough. Oh God, I, I pray that you would remind everyone, including myself today, that it is for freedom that you have freed us. And that is your heart and your desire for us, God, is freedom. God, I pray that freedom would start entering, not just, not like God, your spirit doesn't need to be in a building. Your spirit can move through Zoom calls. I pray for freedom to come right now over teens' lives that are watching. They would feel a sense of freedom from guilt, from shame, and from condemnation. So God, I pray for this in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome, guys. So it's so happy that you guys were able to join us, especially for our first TC Youth online experience. Right now, some of you guys are going to be jumping into our tribes and into some of the small groups that we're going to have, as well as the rest of what's going to happen in our service, uh, in our services. So can't wait to see you guys in the room, and I'll see you guys soon.